So what are the ways to get visibility for your business? I have talked about using paid advertising such as Facebook ads, and that's certainly a way that I continue using and, and recommend. Another way that's a quick way to get visibility is to have influencers promote your business. This is really how I started my business 10 years ago without any network in this field, without any notoriety, even really without any training. I figured, I learned things myself and I decided to start helping other people. They seemed to be, they seemed to be helped by it. And then I started approaching some influencers to help them with the skill that I had. Um, I demonstrated that I could help them and then they brought me to their audience, et cetera. Now, going that direction of using your skills to help an influencer maybe for free for a little bit or having something that they really are excited to promote their to their audience is um, is not necessarily easy because it requires getting their attention and having them believe you enough uh, to you know demonstrating your skill a little bit you know so it's it's not as easy and and by the way before before I keep going I should mention that um, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Uh, I ate too much for dinner, I think, and I just didn't sleep as well. So it was kind of hard to get myself to come and do this video for you. Uh, I hope uh, you don't mind. And I, I share this because um, as, a, as an example of showing up no matter what, and I, I think I always try to be an example of that get consistent, stay consistent, even if you don't, you're not feeling 100%. So I'm going to be a little bit slurring today, a little bit not, not as sharp as, well, I'm usually not that sharp anyway, but, but here I am, here I am going to share, share some ideas with you. I've already outlined what I'm going to say, so I'm just going to follow my outline, and, and Mango is going to help me out here. Um, just so you know, Mango is on sort of his last, his last legs. He was having a hard time breathing this morning. Uh, he's a geriatric cat, so we don't know how much longer he has. We've already, the, the vet already wanted to euthanize him two months ago. So he's living two months past his potential death date. And so he's still jumping up. I sit on a sort of taller chair here, still jumping up. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. So I'm going to tell you about a, a method of reaching influencers in this video that some people just don't even think about, but I, I see a lot of people using it successfully. And the idea is to make some content that the influencer would be excited to share with their audience. There's lots of ways of doing it. You know, you can guess what the influencer might be excited to share and then create that. But here I'm talking, it's the simplest way of doing is this. The simplest way is to feature the influencer in your content. If you uh, talk about the influencer in a positive light, of course, they're more likely to share it with their audience. And um, so I'll give you a couple of, so, so the first step really about doing this is to figure out what is your content strength? Do you prefer to write? Or are you a good interviewer? Or are you good at making a video? Are you gonna, do you have a podcast that you enjoy doing, you're good at doing? So what is your strength? Number one. Number two is then to create a quality piece of content about that influencer using your strength, okay? So the most recent example, uh, in fact, Captain is here uh, at this live video right now. He wrote an article about me for his blog post. It was a rather you know, lengthy article, talked about why he, you know, respects my way of doing my, my work, et cetera. And that was just a, a very, uh, you know, pause, put me in a positive light. So of course I'm excited to share it with my audience. And I even put some advertising dollars behind that post to get it out to more people. And um, so simple and very few people write about me, to be honest. I know a lot of you are in my audience, but very few of you actually write about me and and make it a quality piece so it's like when that happens i'm still i'm still not an influencer i'm not i'm still not really an influencer i would say i'm i'm a sort of a small medium influencer so maybe that's why people aren't writing about me yet but that's why when you write about me i typically am excited to share it and in fact i i, I always have a sunday slot you know I've, i do content pretty much every day one 
one piece of content per day on my main platform, which is Facebook. So if you write about me, I'll probably share your post on Sunday, on some Sundays, we'll have to slot that in. Uh, and if, if it's a quality piece of content that I'm excited to share, I have to qualify that. So, uh, so step one, you know, write about the influencer, make it a quality piece. You can usually uh, make it a quality piece if you get, well, you have to work, you have to do the work of doing the research, figuring out how you can, you know, talk about the influencer in a positive light in a way that's also related to your own work. It's not just, I do energy healing and I'm going to randomly now talk about a marketing coach. You know, it's a little bit random. You, you got to somehow weave it in to your own work. And maybe it doesn't make sense for you to, to talk about me, obviously. So you should talk about an influencer in your field, you see. So it's not about me. It's about an influencer of your audience. So think about an influencer in your field. If you are a, you know, um, I, again, I'm, I'm short on sleep, so I'm not coming up with any ideas except energy healer for whatever reason. If you're an energy healer, then who is a more popular energy healer in your field? Could you, or, or maybe you, know, you feel too competitive to that person. So who is, what's a related field? I don't know. Maybe a, what's, what's related to energy healing? Um, I don't know, personal growth or spiritual transformation, let's say. So who is a spiritual mentor? Uh, not someone like so famous like Eckhart Tolle or, you know, or, um, you know, uh, again, I'm drawing a blank here on the short, shortness of sleep, but not, not someone so famous where it's like so many people are writing about them that it doesn't, you know, yours is just going to be one of a thousand pieces about them that month, right? But, but pick, pick an influencer that, that doesn't have a lot of people writing about them yet. Like maybe they only have two or three people writing about them a month, okay? Then they might be willing to share your piece, you see. So that's really the key is to is to pick an influencer who has an audience of people that you probably would love to reach and then write a quality piece about them. And um, it could be either in writing or it could be on a video talking about them and why their work is, matters and how that relates to your work, et cetera. Or it could be an interview. Now, now again, someone famous, you're not gonna be able to, to interview them, but pick someone who is not yet quite famous but who has a following and reach out and say, I would love to interview. I would love to make it a quality interview, something that, uh, that you would be excited to share. I'm, uh, let's figure out some questions that maybe it's not, it's not something you frequently talk about. I don't know. So it's your work. It's your homework to figure out how to make a quality interview. Be, be creative, brainstorm, talk to some friends, figure that out. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and, and Yule says Gary Zukav. Yeah, Gary Zukav, though, is probably, probably too famous. Uh, so pick somebody, like he's in the stratosphere. You know, like he's a legend, right? So pick someone who is like, maybe has a couple thousand Facebook fans, or maybe a couple tens of thousands, but not someone who has hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. That's a little bit in, more in the stratosphere. That's hard to reach. Now, we all kind of reach a little bit, a few rungs uh, above us, right? A few rungs above us. And so think about that. Maybe you have a couple hundred Facebook fans, reach out to an influencer with a couple thousand Facebook fans. If you have a couple thousand Facebook fans, reach out to an influencer with a couple tens of thousands. And so just kind of reach to the next level. And that way, what ha here's what happens. I should even, you know, again, lack of sleep. I didn't even say why this is important. When you feature an influencer, they might promote you to their audience. They might promote the article, the interview or whatever. Okay. They might. You can't pressure them. That's the other thing. You can't say, George, I'm going to interview you only if you promise to share my interview with your audience. There's, that's actually a strategy people use. It's called the telesummit. It's very pressure heavy. I don't like telesummits. And whenever someone invites me to a telesummit, I'll say, I will do this only if, number one, if, if it turns out well, I would be happy to share my interview with my audience without an opt-in. That's the catch. I, I want my audience to be able to view the interview without having to put, give, their, give you their email address, okay, number one. So most, most people at this point who are hosting Telesummit say, George, sorry, it's not, that's not gonna work. I want everyone to promote my thing two times to their email list, right? The second thing uh, um, 
lost my train of thought. Okay, so basically, uh, the the reason why an inter, inter, um, having an influencer featured on your content is great. One, they might promote your that piece of content to their audience. Number two, just having that piece of content online means that their audience is searching for them on the internet and might find your content and therefore might get to know you. This happens all the time. I used to have a podcast. Um, there are other reasons why I stopped doing a podcast, but I used to have a podcast and, and I interviewed a couple of people who were a couple levels up ahead of me. Actually, I was lucky to get some people who were quite famous. Sharon Salzberg is a famous Buddhist meditation teacher. I got her on my podcast. And that was one of my most popular episodes because people were searching her. I put that podcast not only on iTunes, but also on YouTube. And so YouTube is the, you know, one of the, this the number two search engine in the world is YouTube. Google's number one. YouTube, technically owned by Google, is number two. So when people search her name on YouTube or on you know, Google, there's a chance of finding my episode. Now, she's even more famous now, so tons of people are interviewing her. So my, I'm sure my episode is way down there. But, but you see, so even just an audience, someone who has an audience, they're searching for that person. You know, Captain wrote an article about me. I'm sure at some point, if you Google my name, Captain's article probably comes up, you know, fairly soon, fairly close. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty well search engine optimized for my name. But if you, if you Google, I'm sure George Cow blogger or whatever, I'm sure Captain's article probably comes up within the first two pages, I, I'm guessing, haven't tried it recently. So just, just the, the name recognition as part of your blog or your, your YouTube channel or your Facebook will get you a lot more views than if you were just to talk about your own stuff. So this is why people who have, that's one of the strategies that people use to build their audience quickly. It's just to interview a bunch of people, whether it's a podcast, that, no wonder, have you thought about this? Why do podcasts interview a bunch of people? Well, that's the fastest way to grow a podcast because when you interview a bunch of people, the people in their audience will search for them online, on iTunes, on Google, and we'll find that episode of yours and we'll then discover your podcast. Same thing with a video channel, same thing with a blog. You interview people on a blog. So that's, that's the idea. A lot, of you, a lot of you aren't doing this, right? Are you interviewing people on your blog or you're not interviewing, but featuring that influencer or maybe interviewing them? So that's the strategy of, of the day that I want to share with you. It's not just a strategy of a day. It's really a significant strategy for a lot of people. Um, the last thing I'll say is... Um, you know, if you have the funds, become a client of that influencer that you would love to, to have one day share your thing. If you have the funds, um, uh, I'm not talking about becoming my client, I'm just talking in your own field, right? Become that person's client and then become a case study for them. Apply their advice in such a way that could be, inspire you, motivate you to apply, be diligent, a, be a diligent client be a diligent student that I'm going to become, because I will tell you this, I have coached by this point over a thousand clients. Very few of them have become case studies because very few people are truly diligent in applying my advice. Even those of you watching for free who are not clients can become one of my case studies if only you are diligent and consistent in applying my advice and getting results. I can't promise you results because I can't, I don't know how you're going to apply my advice and how diligently you're going to do it, how creative you are at doing it. I can't tell you how to do everything, right? You've got to use your own creativity to figure things out, right? I can give you the overall strategies, but now it's up to you to be creative and to be diligent enough to overcome rejection, overcome, overcome, you know, lack of response, find yourself, find creative ways to overcome these things so that you become a case study. And if you could become a case study, I will promote you. Even if you've never paid me a dime, I will promote you because I follow George Cow's advice and this is what happened. Of course, I'd be happy to promote you. I'd be like, look, here's somebody who followed my advice and got results. Yay, right? This is true in any field. Think about your own field. Become a case study in your own field and your teacher, your coach, your mentor will love to promote you, whether or not you ever paid them a dime. Truly. Because very few people become case studies because very few people are diligent and very few people are creative enough to become, to get results.
to be honest with you. I mean, it's really, creativity is one aspect, but really it's diligence. People are just not organized. Most, most people, honestly, they're not organized and they don't, they don't spend the energy to become organized, become diligent, become disciplined, to, be, to apply the advice and to do it long enough to get results. That's true in any field. So you can become a case study and you will then be promoted by your teacher, your coach, your mentor. So, um, so anyway, I hope this is inspiring, helpful, uh, despite my lack of sleep and my loss of train of thought. Remember, show up no matter what. You don't have to be like me where you're telling your audience, I didn't get enough sleep, I'm having a bad day or whatever. I, I do these things so that I can hopefully it's – because I'm teaching about content. I'm teaching about showing up. So I, that's why I say these things. But if you're not having a good day, if you, don't, you, know, you didn't get enough sleep or whatever, don't tell that to your audience. Just show up anyway and do it because your true fans are going to love you anyway. Your, your true fans, no matter how slurred your speech is, no matter whatever, they're still going to enjoy the content because – you are still a step ahead of them and just the way you show up is somehow beneficial for them. So just remember that. I hope um, this is helpful and thank you to Suzanne uh, uh, for showing up here, Mar Marie Louise, uh, Yule, um, am I pronouncing your name right? Is it Yule or Yule? Uh, Captain Heather, thanks for being here and wishing you a wonderful rest of your day. Go out there. Look at the influencers in your field. Look at the influencers with an audience you want. And if you can become a case study, great. If not, at least create a quality piece of content featuring them. Or if you can interview them, that's even better. So take care. Go and do the stuff. Be well.